Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Welcome to another math struggle. Today is part three of the Lagrangian optimization mini series. Today, what I want to talk about is dynamic optimization. Specifically, I'm going to talk about dynamic optimization for a fixed time period. So this is not going to be t equals zero to infinity. This is going to be for a set number of periods from t equals zero to t. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run through an example, and I'm going to show you how to set up the Lagrangian, how to identify each part of the Lagrangian. We're going to talk about first order conditions, as well as why we need to be careful when we take first order conditions for a dynamic optimization problem. And then, of course, overall, we're going to talk intuitively about what exactly it is that we're doing. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. These are the goals that I have for this video. But with those in mind, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And before we jump into dynamic optimization, one thing that we're going to use in dynamic optimization is the idea that things in the future are worth less than they are today. So for example, from when we talked about present value, we said that Bill choosing between $100 today or $100 in five years would generally choose $100 today. And the reason he's going to choose $100 today is because $100 today is worth more to Bill than $100 in, say, five years. And the idea of that concept was what we call time discounting, or the discount factor, or we're discounting the future. And we said that we have a discount factor or a discount rate somewhere between zero and one. Because if we had a discount rate of zero, then we wouldn't care about tomorrow at all. It would be completely worthless. And if we have a discount factor of one, what we would say is that tomorrow is just as worth it as it is today, which means we don't discount the future at all. So we're going to pick somewhere in between those two extremes. I'm not going to say exactly where, but we're going to just going to be somewhere in between zero and one. And we're going to call this discount factor beta. So with that in mind, let's just quickly review the different parts of the Lagrangian. So we have an objective function, which I'm going to call O. It could be a function of my choice variables, my state variables, or parameters probably going to be a combination of several of those. My constraint, some function B, same things. And so when we went to set up a Lagrangian, we said we're maximizing or minimizing our objective function subject to our constraint. And that meant that we said plus lambda, and we set our constraint equal to zero. And remember, we get to choose certain variables. So we're generally choosing our choice variable and our state variable. And those are generally the things we're going to take the first order conditions for. And remember that this lambda is our willingness to pay for relaxing the constraint. So in the utility maximization problem, we called it the shadow price of wealth, which I talked about in the last video. Now, once we had the Lagrangian all set up, we said we get to take a first order condition with respect to lambda. That just gives us our constraint back. We said we get to take a first order condition with respect to each of our choice variables because we could have more than one. And we get to take a first order condition with respect to our state variables. The reason you get to take a first order condition with respect to each of your state variables is because generally your state variables are a function or a result of your choices in previous time. So for example, if I'm thinking about how tired I am today, how tired I am today is a function of what I chose to do yesterday, not of what I chose to do today when I wake up in the morning. Just as a brief example, and we'll use that example in a little bit. So if any of this was slightly confusing, I would encourage you to go check out part one of this Lagrangian optimization series. It'll definitely help clear things up. Otherwise, let's keep going. So when we're talking about a dynamic optimization problem, I'm going to use an example, and I'm going to use an example that's not 100% related to econ, because I think it's intuitive for a lot of people to understand. And so the example I'm going to use is Bill is figuring out how much to exercise on any given day. And the amount of minutes that he gets to exercise is what we're going to call CT. And maybe that's because Bill only does cardio. So we're thinking about specifically how many minutes of cardio Bill wants to do today or in time T. And when Bill gets on the treadmill or does some cardio, he gets some happiness. He gets some utility. We're going to call that U of CT. And that's as vague as I'm going to leave it because we don't necessarily need to get into it in this video. Have a state variable in this problem. We're going to say that Bill has a level of energy. And his level of energy today is little e sub t, or his energy in any day t. And what we're going to say is that Bill's energy tomorrow, or his e t plus 1, is however much energy he woke up with today, minus the energy that he spent doing cardio, which is just going to be equal to the amount of cardio that Bill did today, or ct. And then Bill gets to sleep at night, and he is always going to get s bar in terms of his recovery, in terms of energy from sleeping. He woke up today with some energy et. He lost some energy because he exercised, 
then he gained some energy because he slept, and that's how we get to the amount of energy that Bill wakes up with tomorrow. So the question that we're trying to ask with this dynamic optimization problem, or any dynamic optimization problem, is we're trying to figure out an optimal plan. So for Bill, maybe he's trying to think about the optimal amount of cardio to do every day for the next week, starting on Monday and ending on Sunday. And if that's the case, maybe the picture in our head is Bill's lying in bed on Sunday night, and he's thinking about what he wants to do for the rest of the week. So he's going to wake up on every day with some amount of energy. So eat Monday, eat Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And he gets to choose how many minutes he spends on the treadmill or how many minutes he spends doing cardio on each of those days. And so remember, this is dynamic optimization. So we need to think about this on any given day because Bill knows that he's going to wake up on, say, Wednesday. And so Bill is trying to think about how many minutes he should spend on Wednesday on the exercise machine given that he's already chosen Monday and Tuesday. And so the amount of energy he wakes up with on Wednesday is sort of predetermined because he's already chosen what to do on Tuesday and Monday. So what is happening for Bill on any given day? So what's happening to Bill maybe on Wednesday? On Wednesday, Bill gets to choose CW. He gets to choose how many exercise minutes he spends on the cardio machine on Wednesday, how many cardio minutes he spends on Wednesday, and he gets a certain amount of energy when he wakes up in the morning, the amount of energy he wakes up with is EW, which again is based on CT, which is based on ET, which is based on CM, which is based on CM. So what you can see on any given day, choices Bill made in the past affect his options today. And that's why it's a dynamic optimization problem. For every day separately, we have to consider all the past choices that Bill makes. And Bill's thinking about all the past choices when he makes every future choice. So that's why it's a dynamic optimization problem. So if we were to just think about his problem on any given day, on any given day, it would be U of CT subject to how much energy Bill's going to have tomorrow. But again, this is for one day and we want the whole week. So let's make this for a whole week. So when I make this for a whole week, notice that if I talk about Monday, Monday is going to be period zero. That's the first day of the week, which means that if our constraint talks about Tuesday, we have to discount our constraint because we're talking about today, but our constraint is tomorrow. So I need to add a beta for our constraint because our constraint is going to be about the period after. And if I talk about Tuesday, again, I'm thinking about this on Sunday night or Monday morning looking forward. So Monday has a beta zero because Monday is the present, so I don't discount the present at all. But then on Tuesday, I'm going to discount it by one because it's one period in the future. And on Sunday, I'm going to discount it by six because it's six periods from Monday and I'm making this plan on Monday. And so what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to put those betas into these constraints because on Monday, the constraint about Wednesday is two periods from now. And so if it's two periods from now, I need to discount it by beta squared. And next Monday is actually seven periods from today, which is a Monday. So this needs to be beta to the seventh. So if that was confusing in any way, definitely put a comment below. But all I'm saying is we're discounting the future and we need to discount it by how many days in the future it is. So if we're talking about Tuesday. Again, today is Monday. So Tuesday is one period in the future, but Wednesday is two periods in the future. We keep going all the way to Sunday. Sunday is six periods in the future and next Monday is seven periods in the future. So that's what we're doing. And now let's write this a little neater because this is a lot to write. And it's also going to be a lot if I need to take a first order condition for the fact that I'm choosing a amount of cardio every day, Monday through Sunday, and I have a level of energy Monday through Sunday. So let's see if I can clean this up a little bit and write a little nicer using summations. So again, here's this same constraint just written a little neater where I'm going to index my summation by day equals zero to six, where day zero is basically today or Monday, and day six is really Sunday. And so I'm going to have beta to the number of days from today, which on Monday is zero and Sunday is six. I'm gonna use D to subscript each given day. So again, if I'm choosing CD from D equals zero to six, I'm choosing my amount of exercise on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I have energy levels on Monday through Sunday and I need to have an extra beta for my constraint. Because if you look up here, 
you can see that every time if I'm multiplying this by beta, if I pull a beta out, this is going to be beta times this. I need another beta here. And then if I did a beta 6 like this, then this would just again become a beta because I have an extra beta when I do the discount rate for the constraint. And again, if you're a little confused, put a comment below. I know it can be kind of confusing. So now, notice that in each period, we have a choice variable, a state variable, and a parameter. In our choice variables, we still have the full set of choice variables from Monday to Sunday. Same thing for the amount of energy we have, but we're just writing it in a condensed way. And the reason this is useful is because when we go to take these first order conditions, I'm not going to take a first order condition for like the amount of exercise that I do on Wednesday. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say how many exercise minutes I want to choose on any given day and how much energy I want to have on any given day. And what that is going to do is that is going to give me what we call a representative first order condition where say DL DCD is going to represent the first order condition for the amount of minutes that I want to do cardio on any day. So here's this Lagrangian, just rewritten a little smaller so it'll fit. And of course, I can first take the first order condition with respect to my Lagrangian, but notice that this is my Lagrangian multiplier here rather than just lambda. But similar to before, it just gives me my constraint. Now, if I take the first order condition with respect to C on any given day, with the amount of exercise that I do cardio-wise on any given day, my first order condition is going to be beta to the D. So that's a constant. This is going to be my marginal utility. And then my Lagrangian multiplier, the only place that CD comes up is right here. So that's one. And what I'm going to do is just set that equal to zero and simplify so this can go away. And then what I'm going to have is that my marginal utility of exercise is equal to minus beta times my Lagrangian multiplier. And the reason that's useful or that makes a lot of sense. This is my marginal benefit when I exercise an additional minute today. But if I exercise an additional minute today, then I have less energy when I wake up tomorrow. And so what does that cost me? Well, first of all, if I'm gonna compare costs and benefits, this is generally a plus and a cost is generally a minus. So I'm gonna put a minus sign in front so that they're both in terms of the same thing so that they're both say in terms of benefits and that's not a negative sign that's causing them to be not equal. And the reason this makes sense is say that the marginal benefit of chewing a piece of gum is one and it costs me $1. Well, if I'm talking about a cost, I generally would put a negative in front of the cost of a dollar. So if I multiply this whole thing by a minus sign, this becomes a plus. And I can say that the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost because I multiply by a negative sign. So that's sort of what we're doing. Again, if you're confused, leave a comment. But let's keep going. So the cost is tomorrow. And because the cost is tomorrow, I discount it by one period. And then this is what I would be willing to pay to have that extra piece of energy back tomorrow. So what this is saying is that at the optimum, I should be indifferent between exercising more today and therefore having less energy tomorrow or not exercising today and having that extra energy when I wake up tomorrow. So really it's just saying that the marginal benefit of exercising should be equal to the marginal cost if I'm optimizing, which makes a lot of sense. Now we get to the third first order condition, which is about our state variable. And this is where it's going to get sort of messy and might be sort of confusing. So let's go a little slow. So remember that now I need to take a first order condition for ED. So suppose that I'm taking a first order condition for specifically the energy that I wake up with on Tuesday. Well, if I write this whole thing out, notice that I'm going to have energy on Tuesday on my problem for Monday, as well as on the problem for Tuesday. Because on Monday, the choice that I make on Monday determines my energy on Tuesday for sure. And then on Tuesday, I wake up with a certain amount of energy. So if I take a first order condition, I'm going to need to take into account the fact that ET comes in both of these places. And so when I go to my combined version, I can't lose sight of the fact that ED plus one yesterday at T minus one was really ED. So that's gonna have two parts to this first order condition. So if we use this written out version to help us, and so if we're talking about today, Today, Tuesday has a minus sign in front of it, so we get minus one. Yesterday, 
we have a plus one. So now when we take the first order condition, we're going to have beta to the delta times zero plus beta lambda d plus one times minus one, which is because Tuesday shows up here. And that's going to happen for any given day. And the part about yesterday is because in yesterday's problem, for Tuesday's problem, we have a one over here. So we need to multiply it by one. And again, we're going to set that equal to zero. So what we're going to have if we simplify is we're going to have lambda on a given day is beta times lambda d plus one. And all this means is that I should be willing to pay the same amount to have more energy either today or tomorrow. It shouldn't matter. The only thing that makes it slightly different is because of tomorrow problem, I'm going to discount a little bit. So if my discount factor was one, then it would be the case that lambda d is equal to lambda d plus one for all d because my cost or the willingness to pay for extra energy on any given day should be the same. But because beta is not one, we need to keep beta in here. And so that's why they're not exactly equal. They differ by the discount rate. They differ by the discount rate beta. So maybe in a separate video, if you think it would be helpful, I'll talk about this first order condition again in general, and maybe go over some additional tips. But hopefully what this is showing you is that when you're doing dynamic optimization, you have to take a first order condition for every choice variable, which in this case is CD, and every state variable ED. And you have to make sure you set your constraint up correctly. And you have to understand that this is sort of a plan where you're going day by day, but you're thinking about your optimal plan for when you wake up on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, we also didn't solve this because I didn't think it would be that useful. If you think that would be helpful, again, a comment would be great. But if this video is overall helping you out, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.